Welcome to worship today. As Bethlehem's youth, we like to bring a special welcome to you on such a special Sunday. It is not only Youth Sunday, but also Montana's Outdoor Ministry Sunday. Please join me in our special itinerary litany today. <laughs> okay, we give you thanks, O oh God, for the blessings of outdoor ministries. And today we especially celebrate the ministry of Flathead Lutheran Bible Camp and Christicon Bible Camp. Thank you for all who grow and learn and play at camp. May 
We praise you for the awe-inspiring creation in which our camp abide. Help them con continue to be good stewards of the land entrusted to them. May your spirit nurture faith, hope, and love in our outdoor ministries. Thank you for all who experience your rejuvenating and restful presence at camp. Families, adults, grandparents, pastors, youth directors, and children. May your spirit nurture faith, hope, and love in our outdoor ministries. We praise you for faithful summer camp counselors who generously give of their time and talents to walk alongside youth people in their lives of faith. May your spirit nurture faith, hope, and love in our outdoor ministries. We celebrate all year round staff for their faithfulness to their callings and commitment to nurturing community, hospitality, faith, and trust. May your spirit nurture faith, hope, and love in our outdoor ministries. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please stand for our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who brings us out of captivity into freedom, out of the wilderness into the promised land, out of death into life. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Forgive us and give us strength to turn from sin and to serve you in newness of life. Amen. Hear the good news. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us new birth through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Our entrance hymn is in the Red Book, number 325.
beloved of God, called to be saints, grace, mercy, and peace be with you. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us who forth of the fruits and spirit, that in life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today comes from Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall, say, they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall, know, they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Please read the psalm responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love and your great compassion, blot out my defenses. Wash me through and through from wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. 
for I know my offenses and my sin is ever, ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and what I have done is so justified, speak by God in judgment. In need I was born, steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Need life wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with high soap, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be pure than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me clean heart, O oh God, and you are spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to salvation, and sustain me from my spirit. The second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. So, so also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever. According to the order of Melchizedek, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. The gospel for today is from John 12, verses 20 to 33. Glory to you, o Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida, Bethsaida, Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from the heaven came from the heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of our Lord.
may be seated. I'd like to call the children forward for the children's sermon. How are you guys this morning? Good? Good. How many of you have ever done the hokey pokey? Can you help me sing it? You know how it goes? Put your right hand in, you take your right hand out, you put your right hand in, and what do you do? You shake it all about, you do the hokey pokey, and then you turn yourself around, and that's what it's all about. Have you heard that before? Maybe, some of you have. And so it's this little dance, and then you put your left hand in, and then you put your right foot in, and your left foot, and then your elbow, and then your ear, and then your nose, and your head. And the last verse, do you remember, do you know what you put in in the last verse? Hmm. Put everything in. You put everything in. You put your whole self in, you take your whole self out, put your whole self in, and then you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey, you turn yourself around, and that's what today's lesson is all about. So today we're talking about the hokey pokey. And you might look at me kind of funny and say, we're going to dance in church today? What is this? But no, it's a little, um, little different than dancing. We're talking about putting our whole self into something. How many of you have ever jumped into a lake before? You've maybe gone off a dock or maybe off of a beach. You've run into the lake and you just jump into the lake. And you can't really half-heartedly do that, can you? You've got to put your whole self into it. You can't just stick your hand in the lake and take it out, right? That doesn't really count, does it? No, not really. So God calls us to put our whole selves into things. And God calls us to put our whole life into things. And that is what we're talking about today. Does that make sense? A little bit? Okay, will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for the hokey pokey. Thank you for things in life that we can put ourselves into. And where we can shake things up and make good things happen. We love you, Lord. Amen. Thanks, guys. Please join in. Oh. Hymn 720.
Guess we need a little bit of sound amplification. I'm Blink Winkman, and welcome to the Game of Life. <laughs> That's right, the Game of Life, where the whole thing is made up, but the points, boy, do they matter. For this game, we have three contestants that are playing, and their goal is to win the Game of Life. As you can see, our contestants come in with points in their tanks before the game even starts. These points come from their past life experiences and will be used in the choices they'll have to make today. Their tanks are full of points in several different categories, including wealth, heart, intelligence, health, and time. Watch how these points will change throughout the challenges and choices our contestants will be making today. Let's start by welcoming our contestants to the stage. Contestant number one's name is Izzy Goodward. <laughs> she is an English teacher from the suburbs of Detroit, Michigan. Izzy enjoys camping and spending time with her two young kids, her husband and her dog. Welcome to the game of life, Izzy. Contestant number two is Holly Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks. Holly says that she doesn't really have a place to call home, but has several mansions all over the world. When she's not traveling for her work, Holly enjoys pedicures, going to the beach, and drinking coffee. <laughs> Let's welcome our final contestant, contestant number three. <laughs> Say hello to Vladimir Johnson. Vladimir is a fisherman from Alaska that likes being around his family, running, and being on the ocean. Excellent. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Let's get the Game of Life started with the contestant number one. Hello and welcome to the show, Izzy. I'm glad to be here. To start off our first round, would you please come to the wheel and give it a spin, Izzy? Spin the wheel! Spin the wheel! Spin the wheel! <laughs> all right. Well done, and look at that, you've come to a crossroads. Let's see what's in store. Hmm. Your work as an English teacher has been quite fulfilling, and one of your co-workers has recommended you for a scholarship for graduate school. So, would you like to continue your education and receive another degree in education, or would you like to decline this offer and continue with the current work you're doing? Oh my, this is very exciting crossroads to come to. I know this will take away from my time and wealth tank, which could hurt me down the road, but I think I'm going to take this opportunity. Let's hear a big round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations, you will lose 30 points from time, 10 points from wealth, however, you will receive 15 points in intelligence. Wonderful. Let's move on to our next contestant, Miss Holly Schultz. Hello, thank you for inviting me to the show. Absolutely. Holly, since you are the CEO of Starbucks, I just have to ask, what's your usual order at Starbucks? Well, I like to think of myself as not terribly picky. I don't like to make things too complicated, but I prefer a venti white chocolate cinnamon chai latte with 1.5% milk, three shots of espresso, shaken, not stirred, of course, a dollop of whipped cream, a sprinkle of cinnamon, and a plain scone on the side. Look at you keeping it simple. I do try. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and start the game. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Ooh, nice spin. She went for it with all her gusto. I think we'll just put it right over here. <laughs> well, look at that. It's another crossroad. Here's the situation. Your company has bought land in South America that could be very beneficial to build a factory on. The land is currently being used as a wilderness sanctuary and has the most diverse selection of fungi on the planet. Will you either destroy this wildlife area to expand your business and make a fortune, or keep this area as a sanctuary and allow scientists to explore with their work? <laughs> wow. This is a really big crossroads. I could make so much money with another factory. However, 
I don't think I could sleep at night, you know, knowing about all the animals in the area that would be harmed. I think we'll just have to take our money losses and not expand. Probably better for the company name as well. Wow, how about a big round of applause? Well, Holly, that decision is going to, going to decrease your wealth tank by 50 points and increase your heart tank by 15 points. Let's meet contestant number three. Welcome to the show, Vladimir. I'm very happy to be here. Sounds like it's been a while since you've been on land. You can say that. It's been about three months, and I'm so happy to be to have found land again. Well, we're glad that you're here. Now, let's see what fishy situations the game of life has for you today. Go on and spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just stop the wheel right there. Oh, look at that. Our last two contestants both got crossroads. You've received a life event. This is an event in life that you cannot control and have no choice in. Hmm. And I'm so sorry to say, Mr. Johnson, that your girlfriend has decided to go her separate way. <laughs> According to this, she said something along, along the lines of, it's not me, it's you. <laughs> You spend more time on a boat with stinky fish than you do with me. We're growing apart, yada yada. Wow, that's got to hurt. Jeez. Well, I guess it's for the best. When life gives you lemons, go fishing. <laughs> Big round of applause. What a positive outlook, Vladimir. As it turns out, your heart tank did lose only five points and your wealth, health, and time tanks increased by five points each. Chin up. Now, let's get back to Izzy for her second spin. Oh, wait a minute, what's that? Could it be? It's God calling. Uh, hello? Uh, yeah? What, what's that? You, you wish to speak to Izzy? Why, of course. Made in China, powered by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello there. I called with a proposition for you, Izzy. A proposition? What do you mean? Well, I have a special job for you. Just for you. If you choose to accept it, I'm going to ask you to invest all that you can and give from your tanks for me to make this happen. Okay, what's the proposition? I know you're very happy with your job in the suburbs of Detroit teaching, but I really need you to go into the city and teach downtown Detroit. They, are ju they just are in some need of my love. What do you think? Wow, that is a tough offer. It's hard just to say yes to that considering my family. I truly believe in you, so I'll say yes, but I'd only like to invest 50% of all my tanks. Not all of them because I need to think about my family, but enough. Thank you, Izzy. I'm proud of you for considering. Well, that was a tough decision here at the Game of Life. Izzy, how are you feeling about this choice? I know it'll work out, but I just can't give it my 100% because I have to think about my career, school, my family, and my own well-being. That's a lot to take on. Completely understandable. The good news is that God provides. Let's take a look at what you got back from the 50% contributions you made. Jesus gave you 100 points for health and intelligence, and 200 points for heart. Looks like you won't make back that time or money, but what a good trade-off. Well, moving on to our next contestant. Holly, you know what to do. I sure do. Spin the wheel! Spin the wheel! Spin the wheel! Spin the wheel! And it looks like she's received a life event. Let's see what's in the cards for you. I don't think I like this. I don't like this at all. Well, let's hope you do like this. As it turns out, coffee has been found to cure cancer. The Lutheran churches in America are saving thousands of lives with their Sunday morning coffee. 
and your sales have gone through the roof, which means that your income has increased to an incredible amount. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow, that's great. I don't know what to say. Can somebody get me a cup of coffee? I have to say, I really didn't see that one coming. <laughs> well, Vladimir, why don't you plan to go ahead and spin the wheel, spin the wheel, spin the wheel, spin the wheel. And Vladimir has stay. <laughs> and crossroads it is. According to this, You've been offered an incredible new job. The pay is three times the salary you're making now. The only thing is that this position is located in Southern California and would involve you working at a desk, not on the boat. Now, you must choose if you should move to Southern California and take the offer of a lifetime, or you can stay in Alaska and keep the current job you have. What will you do, Vladimir? My, I do not know what to say about this. All of my family is in Alaska. I don't know a soul in California. The best part of my job is being outside all the time. On the boat, too. I guess I could really use the money, though. Wow. This is tough. And a decision that only you can make. Can I take some time to make my decision? I'm sorry, but we can't give you any more time. Well, Alaska is my favorite place in the world, and I couldn't imagine my life without it. I guess I'll turn down the job. Let's have a round of applause. That was not easy. Well, Vladimir, with the decision you've made, you will gain 10 points to your heart jar and 10 points to your health jar, and you'll lose 10 points from your wealth jar. Looks like it turned out pretty well. And now we're back to Izzy. Go ahead, Izzy. You know what to do. Sure do. Spin the wheel. 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 Whoa, look at that. Let's take a look. Oh, a life event. You haven't had one of those yet. No, but I'm nervous to see what it could be. Don't get too nervous just yet. It turns out that you're not the only one on this show. Congratulations, you're going to have a third child. What? Really? <laughs> wow. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, life's little surprises. You'll have to expand that tent for one more the next time you go camping. This is so great. What a wonderful life event to receive. Such a gift. This is the kind of thing that can happen on The Yay! Game of Life. <laughs> In addition to this life event, you will, you will lose 10 time points, 10 health points, and 10 wealth points, but you will receive 20 heart tank points. Not a bad deal. I wouldn't trade it for the world. <laughs> what an exciting show. Now, we have our favorite coffee lover, Holly. Go ahead, Holly, and spin the... Oh. Wait just a minute, did you hear that? Uh, hello? Uh, yes, here's Holly. I can't believe this, hello? Hey there, Holly, it's me. It's been a while since we've talked. <laughs> Hi Jesus, yes, yeah, sorry about that, you know how life gets. Well, I missed you, but I was calling because I have a special job just for you. Okay. You know you've seen this world and my children in it, with all your traveling in several houses. Yes, yes I have. What did you want me to do with that? I need you to go to the house you visit the least, the one in India. I want you to build several more houses for those who can't afford them. For those brothers and sisters that don't have a roof over their head. I need you to focus on just this task. What do you say? Holy cow, that's a tall order. Everything? You want me to invest everything? Yes, everything. Uh, well, I think I would like to invest like 50% of my money and 20% of my time just to make this happen. That should be enough to build plenty of houses. I'll put someone else in charge of the project, but I can invest money. 
Okay. I'll take whatever you can offer. Thanks, Holly. Don't be a stranger. All right, Jesus. We'll talk again soon. <laughs> what an offer. Holly, how could you decide what to do? It was tough. I love my job. Just too much to give it all up. And I like the lifestyle that I live. Helping people is great, but I have all that I need and there's so much more that I want. I couldn't give up everything. You heard it, folks. Still a very generous investment. In return, you will lose your investments and gain 30 points in the heart tank. It's time for our next contestant to take their turn in the game of life. Well, I suppose I should st spin the wheel. Probably so. Oh, and we know what that means. God's calling for you, Vladimir. Well, hello? Ah, well, like uh, yes, yeah. You're looking for our friend Vladimir by chance? Yes, here he is. Hello? Jesus, how are you? Doing well, thanks, Vladimir. I know we speak often, especially when you're on your boat. But today, I have a special proposition for you. I'm really interested. What are you thinking about it, Jesus? To be honest, I'm not exactly sure. I can, I'm not exactly sure I can tell you all the details. First, I need you to drop everything that you're doing and move. You need to go west. Now, Jesus, I understand directions well, but you want me to go by west? What do you mean? Where do you want me to go? That's the thing. I can't tell you. you, you I can't tell you everything yet, just yet. I need you to trust me. Leave your job, your family, your dog, your house, Alaska, everything you know because I need you to do some my work someplace else. What will happen to my family, in my house, in my dog? Trust me that it will be all taken care of. What do you say? Yes. What did you say? Yes. Take everything, Jesus. All of my tanks. Just take them, and let's see what we can do. Thank you, Vladimir, for taking my call. How about a big round of applause? Did you really just give up all your tanks? We've never had this happen before. Hello? What? Uh, yes, I heard you. You can't be serious. Really? But we've never had this happen before. Okay, well, if you say, sounds good to me. Vladimir, congratulations. You've won the game of life. Wait, what, what? What? Excuse me? That was Jesus. He said that you have given everything you have and given up all the pieces of your life for something more important by accepting his call. You have officially won the game of life. Well, what does that mean? I guess it means you'll never need points again. You've got eternal life. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, I guess I should go and answer my call. And there you have it, folks. <laughs> Big round of applause for our big winner. And there you have it, folks. In all my years of hosting, I've never seen anyone win this game before. Turns out giving up the life you've built for something more important than yourself is what it takes to win in the game of life. So we'll see you all next time. I'm Blink Winkman. Please join me in reading the creed. I believe that Jesus Christ is true God, begotten of the Father in eternity, and also a true human being, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost, condemned human being. He has purchased and freed me from all sins, from death, and from power of the devil, and not gold or silver, but his holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. 
He has done all this in order that may belong to him. Love under his kingdom and serve him in eternal righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. And since he is risen from the dead and lives the world's eternity, this is almost certainly true. Amen. Please join us in reading the prayers of the people. Led by Christ in our journey of repentance and moved by his compassion, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for your abundant love and care for all your children. We, we pray that you continue to bless the outdoor ministries in Montana that are teaching our children your word throughout the year. May all their work be done in your hands and with your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, your blessings are abundant. As we all go along in the game of life, life, please help us to see your call in our daily actions. Let us take time for those who need us most and focus our attention on where you need us most, Lord. You always provide. Please help us to fully give our lives to you that you might use it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all, as we approach Holy Week, we are thankful to see the end of our time in, in the wilderness drawing near. We pray for those areas of the world that cannot see an end to their suffering and strife. Please bring peace to these places of turmoil and light in the darkness of their days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you watch over our Bethlehem family. Please hold the Zimmerman family and the Went family in your hands as they grieve the loss of loved ones. Father, lay your healing hands on Wayne Savred, S.G. Mack, Gracie Jones, Don Veal, Tom Walker, Lydia Button, Maria Owens, Charles Larson, Larry Kaber, Esther Christman, and Bob Lavoska. We, live, we lift these brothers and sisters in Christ to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Go peace. <laughs>
please stand. pray. Bounteous God, as you receive these gifts, receive our hearts and our lives. Bless those who bring these gifts today. Deepen their faith, kindle their joy, and free them to walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse our hearts and prepare with joy for the Passover feast, that renewed in the gift of our baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy. Hear the good news. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Abba. seated. During these Sundays of Lent, we are communing at the altar rail, either standing or kneeling as you choose. As you come forward, you'll come by way of the center aisle and file out as far out as we can reach you, and others will follow you. 
The first person who comes to you will have a, a cube of bread. There are gluten-free wafers also on the baptismal font. You may re as soon as you receive it, you may eat it. The second person will have a tray of cups. The inner circle is grape juice, the rest is wine. Please remain at the rail in, in prayer until the, you are dis the whole group is dismissed with a blessing. Everything is ready. Your Lord bids you come. <laughs>